Okie doke. Here we go. Uh, good morning, everyone. Or afternoon or evening or tomorrow even. <laughs> um, uh, this is a, a place to be if you're looking for enlightenment, if you're looking to travel lighter and for a little peace of mind. My name is Mickey and I'm happy you're all here. Um, this is not an AA meeting. That's important to remember. It's just one member's take on the exact nature of the wrong as described on page 64 of our AA big book and the solution found in the 12 steps. Um, if this meeting is recorded and is available on YouTube. Um, now, this is basically a talk where Paul will share his wisdom and experience and, um, and then we'll um, open it up for sharing and, um, and questions and answers. Um, so, Paul, do you, do you have anything in mind or you, uh, you want a little reading to go by? You can do a reading, honey. Okie doke. Um, let's go back to the intro into, um, into our premise on page, uh, 64 and begin um, after the ABCs on page 60. All right. Being convinced we were at step three, which is that we decided to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understood him. Just what do we mean by that? And just what do we do? The first requirement is that we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. On that basis, we're almost always in collision with something or somebody even though our motives are good. Many people try to live by self-propulsion. Each person is like an actor who wants to run the whole show, is forever trying to change the lights, the ballet, the scenery, and the rest of the players in his own way. If his arrangements would only stay put, if only people would do as he wished, the show would be great. Everybody, including himself, would be pleased. Life would be wonderful. In trying to make these arrangements, our actor may sometimes be quite virtuous. He may be kind, considerate patient, generous, even modest and self-sacrificing. My description, totally. On the other hand, he may be mean, egotistical, selfish, and dishonest. But as with most humans, he is more likely to have varied traits. What usually happens? The show doesn't come off very well. He begins to think life doesn't treat him right. He decides to exert himself more. He becomes on the next occasion still more demanding or gracious as the case may be. Still the play does not suit him. Admitting he may be somewhat at fault he is sure that 
other people are more to blame. He becomes angry, indignant, self-pitying. What is his basic trouble? Is he not really a self-seeker, even when trying to be kind? Is he not a victim of the delusion he can risk satisfaction and happiness out of this world if only he manages well? Is it not evident to all the rest of the players that these are the things he wants? And do not his actions make each of them wish to retaliate? snatching all they can get out of the show. Is he not, even in his best moments, a producer of confusion rather than harmony? Our actor is self-centered, egocentric, as people like to call it nowadays. He is like the retired businessman who lolls in the Florida sunshine in the winter, complaining of the sad state of the nation. The minister who sighs over the sins of the 20th century. The politicians and reformers who are sure all would be utopia if the rest of the world would only behave. The outlaw safe cracker who thinks society has wronged him and the alcoholic who is lost all and is locked up. Whatever our protestations are not most of us concerned with ourselves, our resentment or our self pity. And you can take it from there. Well, let's just add one more paragraph. Okie dokie. Welcome, everyone. You want to read it? Sure. Selfishness, self-centeredness, that we think is the root of our troubles, driven by a hundred forms of fear, self-delusion, self-seeking, and self-pity, we step on the toes of our fellows and they retaliate. Sometimes they hurt us seemingly without provocation, but we invariably find that at some time in the past, we have made decisions based on self, which later placed us in a position to be hurt. Thank you. You're yep. welcome. I just wanted to see if you could pass the test and pronounce invariably correctly. So <laughs> well, you did well, Grasshopper. Thank you. Yeah, it was and all... my teeth didn't pop out. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Thank you for that. I hope you would have gotten off the camera if that happened. <laughs> you bet. You. Uh, yes, obviously this is talking about a life run on self will will hardly be a success yeah now it's almost like a car driven with uh diesel and it's actually a gas driven car is going to hardly be a success yeah yeah so don't you feel that in a sense when they're describing what's going on we are that which is being driven by these things. We're not the one doing these things. It just said here, the famous thing, we were driven by a hundred forms. Driven is different than being the driver. Yeah. Yeah. And in this case, we are the driven. Didn't I felt when I was under the influence, uh, you know, I was being used for transportation, basically. Yeah, something was inside of me that couldn't get out to express itself, so it expressed itself through me, literally. Yeah, I mean, and I looked like all the other models of addiction and alcoholism, yes? 
We may have all different emblems on the hood, but we run just the same. Yeah, because it's the same driver. So we are, in a sense, something that can be driven. I know in self-centeredness, we think we're the end all and be all, and that we're the doer of everything and the thinker of everything and the feeler and the taster and the toucher. But in fact, uh, something must be there to be touched. Something must be there to be tasted. Yes? So we're more of like an interface that, that produces the opportunity of experience. But we're not the driver of that. We're the driven. Uh, so something in us, and this is the, it talks about that basis of self-centeredness. And the better way presented by recovery is the basis is going to be a reliance on a higher power. Yeah. And that, that which is being driven, which is our faith, basically, what we are, yeah, is now going to be driven by the infinite instead of driven by the finite self. So it says, perhaps there's a better way, uh, instead of trusting finite self, which is the condition most of us have been in while under the influence, it was uh, an incredible amount of faith in finite self, yeah, we are now going to be dri driven by the infinite. Yeah. So basically a new employer and the word employ means to use. So let's say the driver uses that which is driven, let's say the car. So we are in a sense, a car to this idea of the driver. We are not that we are not the one that's driving the car. We're the thing that's driven. Yes. And that, and that, where we're going to go by being driven is based on what's driving us. Yes. Not based on our great tires and shit like that, but basically the driver is going to set the, the journey. Yes. The car. Yeah. Is equipped to run over certain roads, but what's going to direct it is not the car. Yes. We are not a self-drive. We actually are a self-driving car. <laughs> Self is driving us. We're way before Tesla and shit. <laughs> and look at what we should have told them. It ain't going to work. You don't want a self-driving car. We've, we've been in that position. It hasn't worked well. So, <laughs> so uh, this is the new basis, the new basis. Yeah, And in that new basis, there's a new freedom and a new happiness and a new attitude and a new outlook. Yeah, it's incredible. It's a huge package deal. It's incredible. So when you change that point, you don't change it. When there's a change on that basic level, yeah, of accepting that you're the driven, yeah, and then uh, leaning towards the right driver, yeah, instead of letting, you know, Let's say you're in a used car lot, yeah, and you're hoping and you're checking out the ones that are going to be the driver. <laughs> hopefully, you pick the right one. <laughs> so, hopefully, our experience has taught us we don't want to be driven by the old employer anymore. Yeah, and and basically, that's the fundamental start, recognizing the disillusionment of of that which is attempting to manage our life. And then from there, doing certain things to produce the effect that we want. And it's, it's crowned by the third step. And the third step is very specific when it says we're going to make a decision to turn our will and lives over to the care of something greater than ourselves. Because we are occupied at that point, and we can't turn our will and life over to the care of something else. We can't. That's why there's the 12 steps. Yeah, we find ourselves in a very, uh, uh, in a dilemma of power. We think we have power when we don't, yeah? The power has been usurped by something else, the parasitical, let's say, activity of self, yeah? So basically, our fuel is now being used to fuel its agenda, yeah? And at this point, it's not our life to turn over anyway. We have to make a decision. Yeah, and in that decision, the next step is to look 
at what has defeated us, actually. To me, that's what the fourth step is. Yeah. It's been turned into something else, but really, if you read, read page 62, it says, being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us, yeah? So in that case, self is the driver, and our defeat was as the driven, yeah? We are now going to look at its common manifestations. So what? So that we can see something that we're not seeing, which is what has, defeat, is, has defeated us and will defeat us is foreign to us, foreign to us, yeah? Yeah. So in this case, the driver is not sewn into the driven. Yeah. There could be a, the driven could be the same, but there could be a new driver. Yes. You don't have to buy a whole new car. You need to get a new driver. Yes. Literally. This is an attitude and an understanding that I feel will serve you greatly. I really, it has served here greatly. Yeah. If not, it could turn into you're going to be the one who hates yourself. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. To have such a cognitive dissonance in your event called Paul's Day with the condition that you hate yourself more than anyone could ever hate you. That's insane. Yeah. We got to knock that shit off. We've got to see something that what has defeated us and is attempting to defeat us is not us, yeah? So we don't have to get the whole, we don't have to destroy the car. We don't have to get any new tires. If that, they, if that becomes obvious, they will be replaced. We need a new driver, yes? That's all. So let's be able to recognize the old driver. Let's draw up a composite drawing that if it's presented to the ones who have been defeated, they'll recognize the defeater. Yeah, they'll see it. As, so this is what we do. We do in in a way. We attempt to describe what we're not. We we attempt to describe the movement, the parasitical movement of what has defeated us, with the hopes that we will recognize it's not us. Yeah. So you don't have to destroy the car. You just get a. You need a new driver. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, once the new driver is put in, that bad car can be seen as a great car. Yeah, that's how wild it can be. That car that sucks and is terrible can be an incredible car. All based on the change of the driver. That's it. Yeah. So the third step is a decision to do just that. Let's turn, hey, let's turn the keys the car keys over to a new driver. Yeah, I make a decision. And what's the first thing we do? We do an inventory on what has defeated us. Yeah. So instead of turning the light on everyone else, we turn the light seemingly on us. And when we turn the light on us, we see something that's foreign to us. Yeah. And hopefully, I hope that after you've done the inventory and you've and it's triggered a recognition of your role in things that you see something else's role in things, yeah? And let's give it a name called self. That's what they call it in recovery. And let's look at its characteristics, its manifestations as what has defeated us and stop calling them ours. Yes, please. I do not want to hear another person call me and talk about their resentments. Yeah? That's like missing, that's like, you know, being a professor of trees without any sense of the forest. Fuck. Yeah. Does it, if you're a, a true book stumper and it is written in English, it is obvious that when it says being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us, us and self are different. Us is all that's been driven, self was the driver. Yeah. Stop crucifying the car for the sins of the fucking driver. And they don't, when you sell the car, the old shit doesn't go back with the old, with the car. It can be null and voided. Yes. 
the car didn't drive over that person. It was the driver used the car to drive over that person. Yeah. When is there forgiveness? There will be no forgiveness if the car is identified as the driver. Yeah. We're going to be holding on to that traffic record of the old driver. And it's 30 years we've been, been, we've been driven anew, or 40 years, or 30 days, or 30 minutes. Yeah? Perhaps it, this is a whole new way, a new attitude and a new outlook, and a, definitely a new attitude and new outlook about the past. Yeah? I'm not a, I'm not a homicidal fucking car. I could be driven by a homicidal fucking driver, yes? But you're not going to tell me the car is inherently homicidal. It's not, yeah? Its attributes are actually of the driver. So let's get clear, please. I think they use that word driven very, very selectively. And as, as Kurt would always point out, self-imposed calamities aren't calamities that you did to you. They're a self-imposed. Self is foreign to us. So something foreign to us has imposed its calamities on us. Yeah? So the driver has manifested its, its dream by the driven. Yeah? And now the driven is taking responsibility to be the driver of it all. This is the bondage of self, obviously. Yes? You ever see that movie Christine or something with Stephen King where the car is fucking possessed and the, the Plymouth thing is running over everybody and shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen... <laughs> <gasps> the car doesn't have those attributes to express. It's the car driver, yes? Either we're taken over or led, led by the spirit, or we're taken over or led by the head. Really, you can break it. There's basically only two gears, yes? It's either that or that, yeah? There's not a blend. So, Yeah. It's so important that it's black and white in an in an in addiction and alcoholism. Yeah. Yeah. They don't mix. You have to see, as Jesus said, you can't serve two masters at the same time. Yeah. You can't have both, you can't can't have two different drivers in the one car. It doesn't gonna go well. Have you ever driven a car like uh, when I drive here? Amelia, my, ga my gal, I bought her fake uh, gas pedal and brake pedal because she's sitting in the front seat with me and I've never seen her more alert than when I'm driving. And I can see her braking and <laughs> guessing. So <laughs> it's, it's like having two drivers in the one thing driven. Yes. <laughs> so I like this this picture because it gives you a sense of something foreign to you that the head the head is sense is it's it's threaded the fabric of your existence with this idea of being self. <laughs> The driver and the driven are the same thing. It, they're not. Yes? They're not the same thing. <laughs> so we make a decision. We put our fucking tire down <laughs> as the driven. And we say, I'm turning my will in life. I'm turning my steering wheel and my fuel over to the care of something greater myself. And then I do the action step. So that can happen, yes? So I do four through nine for that to occur. And then now you have meat, you have oomph behind the decision to turn your will and life over to the care of higher power. And then you find out that that has happened, yeah? 
your life it's already a done deal it has been turned over to the care of some other a different driver yeah and now instead of being a fucking neurotic car you're driving pretty well yes yeah not bad uh i know i know there's such a cherishing of being the driver yes i want to have the pride of being all these great things and then the shame and guilt or trying to avoid all those feelings yeah i want it to be all about me but hey we can't afford that luxury yeah it leads us to very 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 bad places yeah yeah if the driver has brought you to a pitiful incomprehensible demoralized state uh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a beautiful reading. Uh, let me see. I'm not going to go over it. That was the point to me. We are attempting to give an understanding that when you read things and you re and you come upon the word self, you'll see it differently. Yeah. You just won't skim over it and take take ownership about everything that's described after they they pronounce the word self. You'll see it in a different way, and maybe you'll see the connection with self and what you would call your manifestations. And maybe you'll see that you've been used to express through. You were not the expressor. Yeah. Because you've been changed dramatically, haven't you, then? I haven't done any of the shit I did for 36 years when I was out there doing it every day. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. I have a new driver. <laughs> Being all powerful. <laughs> it's better than triple A. <laughs> it's double A. <laughs> I found AA is better than triple A. It has much better road service. <laughs> I have the AA advantage. It's uh, lifetime towing. <laughs> and the tow man always uh, greets me with this too shall pass. <laughs> I get philosophy every moment. So yeah, I hope, uh, didn't you feel like you were p possessed? I mean, obviously, when people describe what it was like to be out there running around crazily, it's like they, some satanic intellect took over or some possession, don't you? You don't realize how correct you are, actually. <laughs> Something has taken us over. Yeah. And something else will take us over. Yeah. Yes. The higher power. Yes. So, all right. Mm. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. And do you know, it's amazing how many of us go through um, the whole process mechanically and intellectually, but we still haven't identified that false identity of yeah. self. So we're never relieved. We're still stuck. Well, it explains it there. It can be very <laughs> virtuous and kind, but it's exactly still it's still that actor. That's right. So this is the point. I it this is how it worked with me when I saw self as foreign to me the possibility of being free became readily available and then it told me that I had been trying to be free as self for most of the time yeah which is another form of bondage of self is trying to be free as self and I had no idea of it until I had an idea of it and that idea has stuck ever since so uh yeah I have not shut the door on the past, but I don't go in the past constantly looking at old files of my re my, you know, my sentences and my attempts of probation, knowing I should never be paroled 
because of these heinous things I did. I don't go there. <laughs> it's just I, I just don't see it. I do not see that I was the doer of a lot of shit I was driven to do. I don't. And it's right. been very valuable. It has. It allows so many possibilities, like enjoying peace of mind and uh, tons of other stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then all those storage units to, you know, to store all your past fucking offenses and shit like that you know, get emptied and then they, something circulates and you feel a like a spiritual like uh, washing goes through. And uh, so you're not detained by your past uh, trespasses. You're present now, yeah? You're not held back by some past idea. You're right here completely all day, yeah? And that was what was sorely missing. I had the here of this moment had been replaced by a mental here that was chock full of the past and and chock full of a of a, a daunting, fear inducing future. Yeah. Now and I wanted to get out of here, but it was the mental here. I I but I took it to be the real here. And I would do anything to get out of it for a short period of time. All the while, that all ever present here was never undone or destroyed or affected. It was just unnoticed. Yeah. And uh, this is the extreme interest in self. The extreme interest in self has you com like completely adhered to the surface at the expense of the depth you know and as it says in aa it's it's deep it's deep inside of us that well we just read it on tuesday it's deep inside of us you'll meet that power yeah you may not notice it when you're completely consumed by the surface but yeah and this is one of the things i love about long-term sobriety uh sobriety allowed a lot of the shit that was underneath to come up and to be seen, yeah? When you have a chaotic surface, all that shit that's really running you, you can't even notice it, yeah? But it, when your life gets a little chilled out, it allows this shit to be, to come up and to be undone or to be brought to step six and seven, yeah? But while you're just splashing on the surface, it stays there unknowingly having a huge influence on us. Yeah. So that's one thing I like about long, long term sobriety. It produces a, a safety for shit to come up so, at, so it can be noticed and undone. Our job is to notice it. Something else will undo it. Yeah. But we see it. Yeah. We become aware of it. And when you see it, then you bring it to step six and seven the great recycler will reconfigure it, yeah? Yeah, so now you'll have, instead of having that murky bottom, you'll have a clear depth that will bring about an illumination on the surface, yeah? Yeah, what you can't see on the surface, you can only see from the depth. You'll have that during your day, yeah? Yeah, it will illuminate your life. So I'm a real believer in uh, six and seven as the recycling activity of recovery, yeah? Because recovery is recovering stuff, yeah? Uncovering, discarding, and recovering stuff. And so that re, to me, our, participant, our participation in that is step six and seven, yeah? You notice something, and you recognize it's not of you, and that foreignness, you take the six and seven, and it gets uh, reconfigured, yeah? Almost like alchemy, so to speak, yeah? Yeah, it's very powerful. Seeing is it. This is why the head wants to be that which is looking, because the awareness is it, really.
and it co-ops the awareness by saying it's me looking, yeah? But when you see that the me that's looking, you're going to see it as foreign, for sure. Yeah, it's not of you. It isn't. Yeah. It's capacity to hate. You do not have that capacity. Most of us aren't hateful characters. We may have grown into expressing it, but, you know, we're not. That capacity is brought about by a takeover. Yeah. We have the fuel that will fuel that capacity, but I don't believe we have that capacity. I don't believe we can hate as much as I see people hate. I don't. I think something comes through us that can, for sure. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, this is a beautiful reading. I can't see it well. The lights are good. And, uh, but it talks about the main delusion is that even confronted with uh, all our failures in managing, the head will just say, if I, I just need to manage better. <laughs> it's like a student driver that won't let you, it won't give you back the wheel <laughs> of the car. <laughs> it just keeps on fucking driving. <laughs> no, no, pull over now, son. No. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So I don't know here. I can see it all. That's the first requirement is that we be convinced that any life run on self-will can hardly be a success. Why do you think any life, a life, we sort of know that, yes? Self-will. So run by self-will or driven by self-will, you see? It's, see, when we're reading everything as the driven, the driver, it doesn't make sense. It becomes more guilt than shame. But if you read it as the driven, it opens up a possibility because as the driven, we could have a different driver <laughs> without really doing that much about the driven. We can, yeah. The driven's going to be the, the driven no matter what, yeah. So the, the driven apparatus is sort of fine. It's really the driver that is needs to be suspicious of, yeah. And isn't a better way is like changing the driver. And we can't do that, so we live this way of life for something to do it for us, yeah? And that, to me, is the recognition that something is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. So as the Toyota, I couldn't change the driver, yeah? And I'm fucking sick and tired of being driven by this fucking driver. I can't change it. So I tell the truth that I can't do that, and something does it, Yeah? I'm still a Toyota, but I have a different driver. Yeah? I thought the way I was used was the Toyota. No. That was the that was the quality of that which was driving the Toyota. Yeah? The Toyota was used to demonstrate things, but I weren't I'm not those things it demonstrated. If a new driver gets in, I'll demonstrate other things, yeah? Completely contrary to the old story of what a Toyota of my type demonstrates, yeah? I'm going to have a whole new way of living. But the same drive, the same car of that event of living is the same, yeah? And then maybe you'll need to do some repairs, so then you'll go to yoga and everything else, and then... You'll get a better, you'll get the car on a higher level of maintenance, but the basis of the change is in the driver. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of young guys in back east where I go, when they start getting sober, they're they're buffed out. They're like muscle cars. <laughs> they're all in the gym. And I first saw them, they were like a skinny crystal meth addict. And now they're fucking like uh, Arnie Schwarzenegger. So they they turn the car into a muscle car. But they got to be careful. 
They need the allow. They need the the driver to change. <laughs> I just have to change the Toyota. No, you don't. Just change the driver. Or admit you can't change the driver and do what we do, and the driver will change. Hallelujah. Yeah? Yeah. It's like a horse that had an old jockey that ran it to the ground. If it sees the old jockey, it gets a little worried. Yeah? It starts kicking up its heels because it knows what it's going to be like. Yeah? We've had a change in jockey. Yeah. This jockey is taking care of us. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah. The Toyota beeps, beep, beeps of gratitude. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Flashing its lights. <laughs> Picking other people up. <laughs> Taking them some places to meetings. <laughs> you can finally use the commute lane. It's not all about you. <laughs> uh, well, anyone want to share? You just get the idea, right? <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Um, you know, Kurt had his hand up, and then Gary put his hand up. Kurt, would you like to come in? Yeah, thanks, Paul. You know, what I was thinking about when you were talking, I said, in, until this became um, like a different viewing platform, you know, I used to say I tried to kill myself three times. And really, that's not what was going on. I was trying to kill the self. Yeah. And I, did, and I didn't know it. But until that viewing flat platform changed, I could not see that. I was completely identified as a condition, you know. Yes. But I I really appreciate your message, buddy. Thanks, man. Good seeing you. You're welcome, Kurt. Yes. Yeah, sometimes it's just a little bit of a change of emphasis, and you see anew. I have great faith in it, literally. Yeah. How are you going to get out of something that you think you're completely in? Yeah. Again, it get leads to death a lot of the time. Yeah. You can't separate the two, so the two have to go as one. Yeah. Of course. I've seen it in my own family. So yeah. In that logic that you can be driven to the only logical thing is to kill oneself. Yeah, it becomes the only way out. And, uh, and, you know, because they've never, that which has been talking to them as them, they've never seen as foreign. Yeah. Yeah. So they're taking their most intimate advisor is insane. Yeah. Yeah. So we have fun here, but it's a serious situation. Um, you know, I've seen people that they had 20 years, this girl, I was just speaking to someone about it this morning. I witnessed this intimately because she was my first fairy princess in AA. She had three months, I had six months. Yeah. And I was starting to feel and I felt so much overwhelming stuff around her love, you would call it lust and love, whatever. And I had been dead for years from the drugs. Uh, and she and I stayed sober. She stayed sober till she was 20 years. And then uh, she started drinking without any telling anybody as when she was a secretary of a few meetings and she started to drink without sharing it. And then it got out of hand as it can. And for the next eight years, she had become very successful in the world, had a lot of money and stuff, had written books on codependency and things um she came in and out for eight years you know went to the most expensive rehabs in arizona and stuff and had sober friends and sober roommates and nothing she couldn't it was just unbelievable 
she finally drank on sleeping pills and overdose. And I went to the memorial and I knew her parents and her sisters, and they were all happy it was over. It had been that bad. They weren't, they weren't mourning the loss of her. They were, they had lost her for eight years. They were happy that it was over. Each, every one of them. I mean, that's an amazing condition to be brought to concerning like someone you love, to be happy that they've passed away for their sake. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, this, that's not an unusual destination uh, that this driver will take your car. Yeah. Because the car can't separate itself from the driver. Yeah. So all the sins of the driver are like dents in the car. Yeah. And it just can't see any reason to go on anymore. Yeah. So uh, it's be important. I would think it's quite important to have that recognition now so you can be free from that bondage of a life bonded to the driver instead of being happily driven by the higher power, yeah? I like that imagery because it has to be this way in recovery. It's got to be black and white. See, if you say, well, this aspect of me is part of me, but it that part of you thinks it's all of you. So just be careful with that, yes? Yeah? So while you're making it a service animal, it's going to use you for things. When you make it your amigo, I'd watch your back. Yes. <laughs> it's got a snake-like nature. It's probably going to bite you. Yeah, so you can say all you want. Certain things are not going to be undone. Yeah, they have to be seen as something foreign. Yeah, yeah. You can't, it's not going to be a transformation of the old driver to the new driver. That one's got to get booted out and the other one occupies the seat. It's not a transcendence in one merging into the other. I don't see that. Yeah, I just don't. I see it's got to be one in, one out. <laughs> I don't think it's a joint venture of managing and direction. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Call me a traditionalist. I don't know. I'm fundamental in this view, I am. <laughs> so we paint a very broad picture so that you can recognize maybe it's not you. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, contrast uh, helps to bring about a recognition. So, so, yeah, so, yeah. All right, thanks. Anyone else, Mickey? Gary, did you have a Gary. question? Bring Gary from Placerville. I do, thanks, Paul. I, I, at the beginning of your talk, uh, you were talking about step three, and, and you said I uh, made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God if we understood and and you know, I heard that a different way today. I always thought that that was like sloppy language. Like, why do you have to make a decision? I was like, why don't you just turn your will over? And it's like, as you're talking, I realized, well, I've never been successful at turning my will over. I don't know how to do that. So. Yeah. This it dawned on me while you were talking that oh that's all I can do, I can make a decision, and, but I'm not like you're saying I'm not in the driver's seat at that point. All right. I can do is say, hey, I, I'm what ready for a different driver. Tell me what's the next step is, and the next step is step four, and yeah. and and those are the new directions. But I heard that a different way before. It has always been like a burden. Oh, now I gotta, I gotta give it up for God. It's like, oh shoot. Well, maybe later. I can't do that. I can't do that. But it doesn't say I have to do that. It says, 
made a decision. I'm willing for that to be so. That's all that's required. That's and right. hallelujah, that is possible. That can I could I can manage that one. I couldn't manage actually turning my life over to and maybe that's a subtle thing, but right now it feels like a, a hallelujah thing, a, a much lighter way to go. Yeah. I can I can get through that step. Yeah, so, great. Yes. You know how I would I see it is I I uh my life had already been turned over to something that wasn't willing to go along with my decision to turn it over to something else. It's a jealous mm. fucking owner. And so uh because who if they have the romantic idea of surrender, would picture it as you going home and writing an inventory. <laughs> you probably wouldn't picture it, but that's what we do. Yeah. So we do this process of four through nine to initiate the transfer of ownership yeah. of the car to a new driver. It's like signing the pink slip and exactly and, and uh, transferring over to somebody else. Exactly. So uh, uh, now we're going to be driven yeah. by some something else. Yes, it's it just works, eh? Yeah, yeah. It, it changes the tone of all the rest of the steps. It's sort of like, you know, I was supposed to have finished this before I got onto step four, but no, that just sets the groundwork so that the rest of the steps make sense. I made the decision, and now the rest of the steps are in support of that decision these are the steps in order for that to happen it's not like i'm doing it it just you know these are the forms i have to sign in order yeah. for the transfer well okay. the first thing as you're saying Gary, ownership to happen yeah the first thing is doing an inventory on the old driver yeah so you're you're yeah. going you're in a, you're in the event of the transfer of ownership from one driver to the other driver. So what we have to do for that transfer is to look at the older driver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's the fourth step. We look at self's common manifestations in our life to recognize what well how failed it is, so to speak. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. we do step five. We share it with another driver who hopefully has been uh, freed from the, another driven, freed from the old yeah. driver. And then we do six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. To clean out mm -hmm. the car from all the old driver's shit. <laughs> yeah. Put some new, new, uh, new, you know, those plastic things they put on the front of the carpets. So when, yeah. And, when you're buying a car, we're going to get it all new. We're going to get a, it's going, we're going to get it all cleaned up and shit. And then the right. new driver treats it really well. Yeah. And yeah, we yeah. don't have to do massive five hour inventories. We just do a, a regular one and keep the fucking car clean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We don't yeah. stop worshiping the car. We sort of honor and have gratitude for the driver, literally. Yeah, I don't. I don't and work and but at the same time, looking, I look in the back seat and see what a mess was yeah. made back there. Wow, look, this last driver really left a big mess yeah. here. I'm going to have to clean some of this up here. You know, take the vacuum cleaner and get down into the cracks and the corners. And but it's not as hard. Uh, thing is if it you know like it, I'm not trying to clean I'm cleaning it up for a new ownership so it's not like yeah. it, you know it's an easier job I'm working on in a sense somebody else's mess and so I don't have to feel the burden of that exactly. all through the, and the thing is you've told the truth you're a Toyota so you haven't led them to think you're a, a Rolls Royce you're a Toyota, and therefore, 
<laughs> You've been as honest as you can be about mm -hmm. the, about the value, and there you go. Yeah, but then you know when the when the, you look in the trunk and there's dead bodies in there, <laughs> then, <laughs> then you feel like you were the driver. Then you fucking have all this guilt and remorse. Mm. But you were the driven. Please. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Don't hide the bodies. Don't move them somewhere and hide them for in your cellar. Fucking just tell the truth about what you've seen. And there you go. I had this thing that happened, if you don't mind. Oh. If anyone else has a share, let's share. But if not, I'll try to do this quick. I was newly, not, I hadn't been sober long, a year or two. And I was buying a car. And of course, I took liberties. I decided to drive that car to about an hour and a half uh, way while testing it down to Santa Cruz. And I was going back to uh, San Francisco and I was on a treacherous road and it was raining in the hill and I hydroplaned. And when I hydroplaned, it triggered a lot of people sort of scraping each other and all this. And then I just... I had such a desire to try to get it started and take off and run, you know, because I thought I caused a lot of the shit and that that feeling came, but I pulled, I, when I got it going, I went to the rest stop where these other people were stopping and then the fire truck came and the police and I actually suited up and showed up. Yeah. My plan mm. was to drive as fast as mm. I could and then, pull off and hide somewhere for a few hours before I got mm. back on the road again. But I didn't. Mm. And I waited for the cops and the cops came and I'm thinking I did probably someone died from this and I'm fucking going to be in a lot of trouble. And I, and the cops came and all these people and he, he asked, does anyone want to, you know, bring up anything charges or anything? And none of them said anything. And I said, okay, you can all go. He looks at our car, looked underneath. It, it seems drivable. You can all go. And it was blew my fucking mind. It was like that crescendo that I would always run out of the fucking room before it hit. I was stayed in the room and there was no crescendo. Nothing fucking happened. I didn't go to jail. I didn't do this and do that. But I would have if I ran. Yeah. It was amazing. It was such a big demonstration in my first few years because at that point I was relying mm. on the new driver. I was as the driven. I was relying on the new driver, and I the results were unbelievable. Nothing fucking happened. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. I, everything. Mm. I just I had never stayed long enough at the scene of the crime to realize it wasn't a crime. <laughs> I was always running. That made a bigger crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blew my mind. So this is. Yeah. Take the role of the driven. And just be clear about what's driving you. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm humbly. You're going to get in the habit of being driven. By the spirit. Yeah. And uh, the Toyota is probably going to get 500,000 miles. It's got a lot of more life than you thought. Yes, it's going to, and it's going to drive pretty good without much maintenance because it's a Toyota. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. Reliable. Very reliable. So, yeah, you don't have to, you do the fourth step. That's the major cleanup of the car. And then you do 10 steps to keep it clean, you know, on a certain level. Yeah. Very you get into a bad relationship. When that breaks up, you got to clean it up a little bit because all the candy wrappers are in the back. And yeah, you just tell the truth and uh, you got a good life. You know, you got something that's driving you that's hmm. is a new employer being all powerful. It's going to take care of us. If we per if we stay close to it, which can't be far from it, and we perform its works well, well. That's not that's not a very rigid definition. It could be any works. Yes. That's the contract we've signed. We have a new employer being all powerful. It's going to take care of us if we stay close to it and performance works well. That's the deal. 
Hasn't that come out? Uh, to me, that has come to pass over and over again, 36 years. Mm. Yes, it has. Yeah. 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 Unfor like being in the driven, the Toyota can be nervous. The Toyota can be filled of trauma. The Toyota can has the ability to run well, but can't run well. Mm -hmm. This is what happens, yeah. We have a life that that shit can be dealt with because the elephant in the room has been dealt with, which is the run, you know, the running wild act of addiction to this really the obsession with self, to tell you the truth. Mm. Yeah. 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 You're not like the head car for the 500 in the Annapolis. You're like a half ton pickup. You're meant to be used. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> you're, not, you're not like a you're, yeah it's good to be useful oh it's incredible yeah. to be fulfilled as a Toyota is a very nice quality of life it is I feel yeah all right thank you thank anyone you anyone else yeah Gary thank you all the time so you're I'm very happy I've met you and your wife and and uh, yeah, I'm happy we've been together in this and uh, enjoying what's constantly being revealed to us. Very cool. Thank you yeah. for sharing. Anyone else, Mickey? Do no. you know, I don't see anyone. Anyone else have a comment, a share, or a question? Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Success, huh? Oh, no, no. That's a good answer. I like that. <laughs> hey, Mickey, thank you for being the eternal greeter of Zen Bitch Slap. Yes. My pleasure. Great job. John in Florida. Always a pleasure, John. Feeling good, everything? Heart-wise? All good, buddy. Thanks. All good right. talk. Great. As always. Gary C., my main man in Placerville. Nice to see you. Stephen Mack, pleasure to share the space here. Joseph, as always, nice to see you, my friend. Yeah. Rico, a man of his word. Yeah. Marl, nice to see you, honey. Yes. Axel, as we trudge the road of happy destiny, honey. Yeah. Yeah. Axel, there he is. A uh, friend in Germany. We got Kathleen post birthday. There she is. She looks younger. It's amazing, eh? Walter. Walter, the man in the Netherlands. We got Saraswati. She's in a car or something. Nice to see you, hon. Rick Rowe, Toronto. Greg. Oh, Greg in Minneapolis. Feeling good on the road. Great. I can't get to the second page. I haven't uh, somehow the Zoom has, I don't see the other people. But hey, thank you. Remember that tradition of uh, loving something is expressing itself through our group conscience. Yeah. It's like, a, it's, it's like a lawn that hasn't been watered, you know? Just let it soak it up. Yeah, there's good mojo. Soak it up. All right, thank you. See you guys. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul.